Today's lesson is on perpendicular and angle bisectors. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and the scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. There's a special relationship between the points on the perpendicular bisector of a segment and the endpoints of the segment. In the diagram on the left, line CD is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Line CD is perpendicular to segment AB at its midpoint. In the diagram on the right, segment CA and segment CB are drawn to complete triangle CAD and triangle CBD. You should recognize that triangle CAD is congruent to triangle CBD by side angle side. Therefore, by CPCTC, segment CA is congruent to segment CB. That means that the distance from point C to point A is exactly the same as from point C to point B. A point is equidistant from two objects if it is the same distance from the objects. So point C is equidistant from points A and B. The perpendicular bisector theorem states, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So if line PM is perpendicular to segment AB and the length of segment MA is equal to the length of segment MB, then the length of segment PA is equal to the length of segment PB. Let's prove the perpendicular bisector theorem. Take a minute to read over the proof of the perpendicular bisector theorem. Now let's take a look at the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. If a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So if the length of segment PA is equal to the length of segment PB, then line PM is perpendicular to segment AB and the length of segment MA is equal to the length of segment MB. Let's go ahead and prove the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. Take a minute to read over the proof of the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. In example one, we will use the perpendicular bisector theorem. What is the length of segment AB? I can tell that segment BD is the perpendicular bisector of segment AC. That means point B is equidistant from point A and point C. So the length of segment AB is equal to the length of segment CB. Since the length of segment AB is 4x and the length of segment CB is 6x minus 10, I will substitute those values in for each segment length. Let's now use the subtraction property of equality and subtract 6x from both sides of the equation. We'll use the division property of equality and divide both sides by negative 2 and x will equal 5. Now that we know the value of x, we can substitute it in for x in 4x, or the length of segment AB. So the length of segment AB is 20. Pause the video and do you try number 1. What is the length of segment QR? We can see that segment QS is the perpendicular bisector of segment PR. That means point Q is equidistant from point P and point R. Let's substitute 3n minus 1 in for the length of segment PQ and 5n minus 7 for the length of segment RQ. We'll use the subtraction property of equality and subtract 3n from both sides and the addition property of equality and add 7 to both sides. Now let's use the division property of equality and divide both sides by 2. So the value of n equals 3. To find the length of segment QR, let's substitute 3 in for n in 5n minus 7. So the length of segment QR equals 5 times 3 or 15 minus 7. So the length of segment QR is 8. Remember, to check your answer, we know that the length of segment QR would be equal to the length of segment QP. So since QR has a length of 8, so should 3n minus 1. Since 3 times 3 is 9, minus 1 is 8, we know we are correct. In example 2, we will use a perpendicular bisector. A park director wants to build a t-shirt stand equidistant from the rolling coaster to the spaceship chute. What are the possible locations for the stand? 
Well, I know that a perpendicular bisector of a segment is equidistant to its endpoints. So if I draw segment RS, the t-shirt stand would be equidistant from both points as long as it is anywhere along the perpendicular bisector of segment RS. So we could put our t-shirt stand anywhere along this line. Pause the video and do you try number two. Suppose the director wants the t-shirt stand to be equidistant from the paddle boats and the spaceship chute. What are the possible locations? Again, any point on the perpendicular bisector of the segment will be equidistant to its endpoints. If we start by drawing the segment between points P and S, then we can put the perpendicular bisector of segment PS. Our t-shirt stand can be anywhere along this line and still be equidistant to the paddle boats and the spaceship chute. Part B asks if we can place a t-shirt stand so that it is equidistant from the paddle boats, the spaceship chute, and the rolling coaster. Well, let's draw three segments since we now have three endpoints. If any point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment is equidistant to its endpoints, we now have three segments, so we need to draw three perpendicular bisectors. We already have the perpendicular bisector between the paddle boats and the spaceship chute. Let's now draw the perpendicular bisector between the paddle boats and the rolling coaster, and between the rolling coaster and the spaceship chute. Notice that all three perpendicular bisectors intersect at the same point. So this should be the location of our t-shirt stand in order for it to be equidistant from the paddle boats, the spaceship chute, and the rolling coaster. There is a special relationship between the points on the bisector of an angle and the side of an angle. The distance from a point to a line is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to that line. The distance is also the length of the shortest segment from a point to the line. We will learn about this later on in the chapter. In this figure, the distance from point A to line L and from point B to line L are represented by these segments. In this diagram, ray AD is the bisector of angle CAB. If you measure the lengths of the perpendicular segments from point D to ray AC and from point D to ray AB, you will notice that point D is equidistant to both rays. Let's have a look at the angle bisector theorem. If a point is on the bisector of an angle, then the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So if ray QS bisects angle PQR and segment SP is perpendicular to ray QP, as well as segment SR being perpendicular to ray QR, then the length of segment SP is equal to the length of segment SR. Go ahead and have a look at the proof of the angle bisector theorem. Now let's have a look at the converse of the angle bisector theorem. If a point in the interior of an angle is equidistant from the sides of the angle, then that point is on the angle bisector. So if segment SP is perpendicular to segment QP and segment SR is perpendicular to segment QR and the length of segment SP equals the length of segment SR, then ray QS is the bisector of angle PQR. Go ahead and have a look at the proof of the converse of the angle bisector theorem. In example three, we will use the angle bisector theorem. What is the length of segment RM? I can see that point R is on the angle bisector of angle LNQ. I can also see that segment RM is perpendicular to ray NL and segment RP is perpendicular to ray NQ. That means segment RM is congruent to segment RP or their lengths are equal. Now I will substitute 7x for the length of segment RM and 2x plus 25 for the length of segment RP. Use the subtraction property of equality to subtract 2x from both sides and 5x will equal 25. Then use the division property of equality and divide both sides by 5. x will equal 5. 
Since we are looking for the length of segment RM, let's substitute 5 in for x in the expression 7x. So the length of segment RM is 7 times 5, or 35. Don't forget to check. We know that x is 5, so 2 times 5 is 10, plus 25 is 35, making both of these segments congruent, so we know we are correct. Pause the video and do U-try number 3. What is the length of segment FB? Since point F is on the angle bisector of angle BCD, and segment FB and segment FD are both perpendicular to the sides of the angle, we know that 6x plus 3 will equal 4x plus 9. We'll use the subtraction property of equality to subtract 4x from both sides and to subtract 3 from both sides. So 2x will equal 6. Use the division property of equality to divide both sides by 2 and x will equal 3. Since we want the length of segment FB, let's substitute 3 in for x in the expression 6x plus 3. So the length of segment FB is 18 plus 3, or 21. Don't forget to check. Since 4 times 3 is 12, plus 9 is 21, we know we are correct. Now's your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and complete the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If there's something you do not understand, please ask me in class. Now try the challenge. I'm pretty sure you can do it. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. See if you've climbed any higher on the scale since the beginning of the lesson.